Enchanté. Hello lovelies, I'm Angela. This is Parisian Farm Girl. Bienvenue and welcome to my channel. If you've been following over the last handful of years, you know that I have a sink addiction. So today I've got some sink inspiration for you. I went into the archives and pulled some older videos from the last few years of us putting some fabulous sinks full of character into this modern eco house. If you're new, we live in an eco house. So we're in the first story greenhouse and above us is a second story greenhouse. This is what keeps the house warm in theory. <laughs> and we are dialing back the clock and turning it into a fabulous French farmhouse. Now, Joel, you guys know him, he's in the back. He's working on one of our sinks because we have a leak. And that's what inspired me to share these videos with you. So I've gone back into the archives. If you can tolerate the audio, I can tolerate the audio because as a YouTube channel grows, so does the technology. So I've done my best to sort of even it out for you, but I think you'll have fun. We're gonna look at the brass, copper, and the brass sink, the copper sink. What other sinks do we have? Oh my gosh. Yes, the one that we found out in the woods. So I'm really pleased to share these videos with you. If you wanna jump around, I've got timestamps down in the video description for you. Let's go back in time, way back in time, to the first story bathroom. It's just a little tiny bathroom. It used to have cattail wallpaper and mauve carpeting. And I had a marble corner countertop in my stash, my inventory. You know, I keep an inventory. And we did a lot of hunting. We found a brass sink and we made an adorable brass sink for our first story bathroom. The plan is to use this bucket as the flush mount sink. It was quite an ordeal to find this bucket because this is the sink has a 12 inch diameter opening and finding an old copper or brass bucket or wash tub or something was, it took a long time, but I found one. It's got a nice patina. It is brass. I wanted copper, but the brass is going to go good with the light fixtures. We're going to go ahead and bend this down and then Joel bought a special bit to drill into this. And then the original powder room sink that's in there right now, it's like a Home Depot special, just your typical vanity. It does have a brass drain thingy that's nice and worn because it's about 30 years old. So we're gonna go ahead and use that because it's got the nice aging and patina. And I think it's gonna be cool. This is 14 inches, the sink is 12, so it'll just hang over a little bit. And the thing, I think, <laughs> the thing I'm most excited about I can't even talk. The thing I'm most excited about is hearing the water. It's gonna be really loud and obnoxious and I think I'm gonna love it. Yuck. things that were here. Uh -huh. You had to cut one off so it would fit in your sink here because... You got that to come off? See? You know, friction. friction. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. I think it's great. So, we'll set that one second. Making a faux European fireplace 
in the kitchen and Lowe's just arrived with all the stone. We have like this much mud in the driveway so we don't quite know what we're gonna do with it but I'm so excited. fabulous. The baby has a place to play that's not on old nasty 1980s carpeting. Now, we need to hang the other chandelier. French farmhouse chateau update for you. So here's what's going on. We have a place to wash our hands. The bathroom is 99.9% .9 done. So we ripped out, Joel ripped out a nasty Home Depot vanity and remember it was cattail wallpaper and mauve carpeting and this big ugly vanity in this very tiny little bathroom. So I have been sitting on treasures for the last couple years. I've been sitting on my copper sink for the kitchen. I've been sitting on this cute marble slab, this corner sink. I've been sitting on a brass light that I found at a garage sale. And this amazing mirror that is desilvering. It was actually Joel's grandpa. Joel's grandpa's, he used to have a barber shop in his backyard in southern Illinois. And this mirror is one of our favorite pieces. I love it that it was from his family. And so we are using that in this powder room. Now, we've ripped out the vanity. We've put in this marble. I spent the better part of a month scouring Etsy and eBay trying to find the perfect brass bowl. Let me tell you, that is not an easy thing to do. So the uh, diameter, right? <laughs> is that what a circle is? was uh, 12 inches, radius. right? Thanks, Amelie. It was 12 inches, and that was really difficult to find. I kept finding the most beautiful patina bowl, and then I'd click on the description, and they'd be like, seven inches. So I found one that was 14 inches, perfect. Joel bent the handle down, drilled a hole in the bottom, we made it a sink. So now when you turn on the water in this bathroom, it just has this dreamy sound and it's a little rusty, a little patinaed. I distressed the brand new brass faucets so they look perfect. We have a place to wash our hands, which is really important because we are moving this party outside. There's just a little bit of snow deep in the forest, but it was 75 degrees here yesterday and it is full on potage project time because I have a greenhouse full of stuff that needs to get planted. But the good news is the cattail wallpaper is gone. The sink is in, we can wash our hands, and I think it's just about time to plant. Before what I think is the best sink, the copper sink, I have to say merci beaucoup. Thank you so much to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. Now, here's the thing. I know you've been watching this channel for a long time. If you have been procrastinating, the time is now, my friend. With 10-minute easy lessons, I can improve my French, you can improve your French or the language of your choice. Babbel offers you real-world practical language skill 
education. So there are podcasts, lessons. It's This is above and beyond vocabulary. So I know you've heard me say this, and maybe you're just sitting there and you're wondering, can I do it? Can I learn to speak a new language? Mais bien sûr, of course you can. Lessons are taught by real world teachers and you'll be speaking in just three weeks. And to back that up, they offer a 20 day money back guarantee. Un morceau de fromage. Un morceau de fromage. Un peu de légumes. Un peu de légumes. Start speaking a new language with Babbel. Click the link in this video description for up to 65% off your Babbel subscription. I mean, come on. Who has the copper sink? I do. <laughs> Hit it. Okay, it was quite an undertaking. A whole lot of ingenuity, a whole lot of creativity, a whole lot of not taking no for an answer, which is what I'm all about. Joel did an amazing job. We have hot and cold on this faucet, hot and cold on that faucet. Here's the story behind the sink. So we um, moved up here. If you're brand new to um, Parisian Farm Girl and our little everyday chateau episodes, we moved up from Chicagoland to this dream location of Door County oh, six months ago. It's almost six months now. And while we were living in Chicagoland, we were renting a farm um, as part of our plan to move up here. And I was attending pop-up sales and barn sales and garage sales throughout the years, just gathering pieces that I thought would be fantastic in our future home someday. So one day my mom calls me and she's like, Ange, my mom's an amazing picker. She says, Ange, I found this sink. You gotta come and check out this sink. It's from France, from a restaurant, it's huge. You gotta have it. So I meet her at this barn. I find this sink, it's brown. It's got cobwebs in it. It is funky and filthy. And of course I fell in love with it and bought it. And I stored it in my barn for a few years. So what you're seeing here, almost everything Joel and I do is about delayed gratification. Okay, we're, we're working for it, we're waiting for it. This sink is total delayed gratification because it was sitting in our barn for a couple years and now it's in my kitchen and I'm so happy. So it is actually not from France. While we were working on it and cleaning it up, we found a sticker underneath and it is from Chicago, which is cool because we moved up from Chicagoland. Love that. Love those kind of details. And it's called a butler's sink. Um, so that's awesome. Called a butler's sink. Uh, actually, I've been doing a little research and I have not been able to find another vintage copper sink online. I think this is a very, very unique piece of hardware. I did find one on Etsy. It's still on Etsy if you yourself would like a copper sink. It's $3,000. <laughs> I'm very pleased to share with you that I did not pay $3,000 for this sink. Not even close. Um, and I did find one. It's the half size version of this that looks like it sold at an auction, an antiques auction many years ago and the, the listing is still there. So this is cool. These are not bolted down yet so I'm gonna show you this detail. I love these. Aren't these amazing? They're copper. I love the Verdigree. I love the Verdigree on this sink. It geeks me out. But I thought, you know what, I don't need four faucets. I was originally going to put in soap dispensers for the kids when they're washing dishes for their mama. But I thought, how cool just to keep the historical aspect of the sink and keep these non-working faucets right here. So that's what we have. And then I bought these on Amazon or eBay or something and I like them. So I've got it skirted with some of my favorite French linen from the old farm and um, in trying to keep uh, a handle on the money spending and the creativity going on here I was going to use barn beams to hold up this sink but that is très cher. So I opted instead, Joel went out to the wood and cut down some uh, birch trees for me for the potager project that we're doing outside and I said well let's just bring some of the birch inside it's Door County after all birch everywhere and so we've got these really cool birch logs holding up the sink 
and the countertops as we decide what to do with the rest of the kitchen. I couldn't be happier. So I am going to go cut some lilacs, stage a picture for Instagram, have some fun, and I can't believe this is in my kitchen. Drop cloth is like forty dollars worth of organic eggs. Don't break the ones that aren't broke. Oh, it just fell right off of the. Uh... The vibration must have made it fall. It's, it's sitting right there, I guess. <laughs> Golly, we better hurry up and clean this up. It's gonna smell like rotten eggs in here. Guess I'm not gonna wear these pants anymore. Don't wipe it on. Head out to the forest for this flashback because a few years ago we were wandering around and we found an old junk pile in the back 40 and lo and behold was a huge cast iron kitchen sink complete with backsplash. Of course, this sat around for quite a while. We finally got it installed, so I'm going to share two videos with you here. The first video is where we found it and I make a full-blown admission of my sink addiction. The second video is the installation, and that was quite a process. There, how's that for some sinkspiration? Wonderful. This is Julie's Upscale Resale, one of my favorite, if not my favorite place to find treasures here in Sister Bay. If you're familiar with Door County and you're a thrifter, you've probably been here. Now, I'm always looking for a good deal, but I also know that to get the look and the style I'm going for on this project of us redoing this house, I have to be able to pull the trigger when that certain item comes along. So today, I'm gonna buy a sink for our very ugly bathroom that we're going to redo. The sink is fabulous, it's very unique. It's a little bit more than I want to pay, but that's okay because I can reflect on all the great deals I've found for things around the house. And now I'm going to pull the trigger on this sink. And that's what you have to be ready to do, right? You're thrifting, you're looking for really good deals, but when you find a really, really unique piece, you have to be ready to take action. And that's what I'm gonna to do today because the look we're going for in the house is very specific. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of patience. I've found the sink I want, and I'm going to make it happen. You ready? Yep. Okay. I might need this desk. Did you see that desk? That desk is really It is. It's amazing. It's amazing. Ooh. It's exactly like the one on that Instagram feed. I can't, I just can't get over it. Like how ironic to find that and then you're like, that's not a sink. And then it shows up on. If it just came with a plumber, that'd be great. <laughs> with a plumber. Right? You can do it. Okay, you know. You got the water that comes out here. Mm -hmm. You got to have. What? This oh is my gosh! Like it's going to work. Why? Because this is this is this is broke. There's no way to attach plumbing to this. Don't tell me that. That is the wrong thing to say. Isn't that like 
Doesn't that fall under like adapt and overcome and where there's a will, there's a way? See this? You have to have to be able to put a sink drain in that. I don't think this is gonna leak anywhere, so it's it's definitely old. Are you gonna use it in or out of the house? She's gonna she wants I'm to use it in her use bathroom. It in the bathroom. Oh, yeah. I think it's perfectly unique. Mm. Julie, really, is this a men's coat? That is a woman's. I have coat issues too. Coats and sinks. I was going to say. <laughs> I can't help it. Like, they're such a great accessory. This excuse me. It's a nice classic. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, is this? The garage sale price, or is this your price? That was said six dollars on the tag. I can't imagine that's your price. I think I dropped it. It was just hanging by like a staple. I don't think. Yeah, no. Yeah, um, and I, but I don't know. It didn't come from a garage sale, so I'm not sure where it got six dollars. But it had a dry cleaners tag on it. Hmm. Maybe that's what it was. It might have been. That sounds a little purple dry cleaners yeah. tag. Yep, that's what it was. Yeah. Oh yeah. boy. Thank you. I think it'll hold the shaft. Okay. Yeah, do it. Oh my gosh, I do. I love coats. I, I, I hear you. I like coats I too. Them. And I always feel that if we live in Wisconsin, we deserve as many coats as we want. <laughs> <laughs> they are too. Yeah, this is really cute. This is cute too. Made in France. Hmm. Not for me. Aiden could wear it. Mm -hmm. So Windsor plaid. Mm -hmm. They're in really good shape. I don't think they're, they're not rotten. Even if they were, you could put a little wood hardener on them. Mm -hmm. They're fine. I think they came from Little Sister Resort. Oh, really? Are 
you going to do it again? All right. Ready? Blueberries. Those can go in a five, right? These are the great vines. These are her? Yeah. Oh, right here? Yeah. Very good. Oh, my goodness gracious. What a magic plastic is this? on your bread. It's going to be okay. All the way garbage and a hundred trees that we cut down last year that were burning. There's a shower stall in my goat pen and a lot of broken glass. There's a concrete slab here. And you. 
And there's me. And Joel just cut down the rebar that was in the concrete because we kept tripping on it. But there's so much glass to clean up and so much old wood full of paint. I don't know if it's from the house that used to be back here or what, but we uh, have our work cut out for us. But I am going to take Joel on a little excursion back in the woods because there's a treasure hiding back there that I have to get my hands on. Let's do it. All right, hold on. Let me get to my last pile here. Oh, look at that Quiet. This is the sink that I took out of the, the little cottage. I thought maybe at one point in the fall I'd bring it into the house, but I think once we rebuild the, the back half of the cottage, we'll put it back in there because it's original to it. Um, but it's... <laughs> one of my mini sinks in my collection. I have this thing about sinks, so we're gonna head back into our forest because sadly, there's a garbage pile, but there's a gem out there waiting for us. Do you have boots on? Because it's gonna be deep back in the what woods. Happened? What, honey? They're muddy. They're muddy. Oh, they're muddy? Yeah. Oh. So who cares? Just move, get them and I don't care about this one because I just wanna make a sink. The first sandcastle over here. Well, Mom is sinking. Oh, oh, it's deep. I was empty your mind. Empty your my mind must be loaded because I was sinking really bad. Hey, do you remember UF and Channel 2 and all that kind of stuff? This, I think this uh, would be really great for the bread oven. I think we're gonna have to bring this back with us. I think it'd be perfect for the chimney. Goodness knows what else we're gonna find back here. There's another sink. Refrigerator trays. Okay, let's go get our sink. I'm gonna set this right here so I don't forget it. Look at this one. That's a I love sinks. I have issues. This could go in my greenhouse. Yeah. That's the bottom. I can't believe all this junk is in our forest. It's sad and awesome. At the same time, this could be really great. Get this ice out of here. That's a good sink for my greenhouse. That's a lot of room for. Yeah. Okay. 
go find the other one. This is a big old washing machine drum. Yeah. And this too. Is there anything we could do with this? This would be horrible to lug back, but it's pretty cool. But they're pretty cool. So, is that another one? Yeah. Uh, uh, another one? Another okay. Joel, you're. It's not a bathtub. Nope. What is it? Oh, it's sweet and round. Yep, it is. Okay. I think I. Well, how many sinks do I have now? You have that one over there, and then that, and then that. This is so cute. I want that one too. It's so rounded and old. Oh, it's fabulous. Okay, so I guess the question is are you feeling lucky? Are you feeling girded? Oh boy. Okay. Oh, oh my gosh. This is so awesome. This is where I'm going to wash my vegetables in the boat room. Do you want to try to throw it over this, or do you want to try to drag it away? Well, what's the lesser of two weevils? Oh, yeah. Looks like it. Lift it. Oh, oh my goodness. Great. What about rolling it? That's how I did that stone last year when you were gone. I rolled it. Oh. That was almost my foot. All right. There. I got it. Hang out. Ready? Yep. <laughs> Joel, you and your plumbing. Like, we'll figure it out later. Come on. Coming. I don't know what to do. Well, it's heavy. How heavy? I think I lift it. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. <laughs> well, you want to roll it? I don't want to roll it. Toboggan? At know. least through this snow? We could try the toboggan. Okay. Unless. Give me the toboggan, cutie. This, this part has to be in Okay, I'm gonna get it lined up in the way we're gonna go. We moved that gazebo at the old house with two toboggans. So surely this can Hey look! It's providential. J R. <laughs> it's supposed to be yours. Okay, excuse me, Okay, cutie. so how are we going to bring this around? What are you doing? Yeah. This, is, this part's got to sit in the bottom. Okay. You know what I mean? Yep. Oh my goodness gracious. Hey, up. And oh, wait. go for it. Okay. This way? I want to go this way. Okay. So you're going to lay it over? Yes. Yeah, right. Might be the best decision you made all day. Toboggans are like you've got to have toboggans on a farm they're so handy this is exactly like the sink at my brother's chicago apartment oh yeah yeah wow. it's got it like 30s 40s yeah, yeah it's fantastic wash vegetables lay them here to dry i mean it's just brilliant no i think pulling it no matter what really needs a toboggan roll. For, for all that it is. Get that.
add this to my chimney? Yeah, put it in. Okay. Or wait the merrier. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Alright. story. That was incredible, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's toboggans, yeah, you got to have toboggans. Day, you know? You've got to have them. Don't put it up against the house there? Yeah, yeah. You got the light end there. Oh, my neck. Oh, okay. I got what? The light end. Yeah. It's going to look. There we go. It's shitty. Okay. Oh my gosh, that was, that was crazy. Alright, I'm going to go back there and get that other one. Okay. The round one. Okay. And then there's the other one. So counting this, the deep one in the basement, uh -huh. the one from the Anderson Cottage, the round one, the other one back there, and this one that we just hauled, I have six sinks. Oh. No! And then there's another one. I have seven. Is that a collection or a hoarding? I can't remember which one. I have a sinking feeling. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I love sinks. Oh, me too. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello lovelies, are you a member of my Old World Design Society yet? Now is the time, check the link in this video description to receive the winter edition and the brand new beautiful spring edition at a great combo price. You'll receive a quarterly magazine, live design classes with me, a private online forum, and also as a society member, of course, you will find new friends who love design, gardening, and antiques as much as you do because you are not alone in your love for beauty and times gone by. Hello lovely 
Ladies, I'm Angela, and this is Parisian Farm Girl. Bienvenue and welcome to my channel. It is a busy day today. I'm all gussied up because we are shooting the cover shot to the spring edition of the Old World Design Society, and we are plugging away on this boot room. So in the last video, you saw some progress on the bathrooms, and of course, because the master bath is right above me, the boot room is a part of that job. So today, I'm gonna try to take this PVC plumbing in this whole outfit here and make it look as old as I can. You remember the sink that we found in the woods and if you listen to the podcast you know the whole drama of this space that it's always chaos and as a homemaker I can't stand it. So I'm trying to get some order and make it happen today. I'm going to share with you a few clips of the last couple of weeks and this is a really special space. So today I'm wearing a work shirt. This is my grandpa's shirt. He is a farmer and my grandma gave me whole box of his old shirts that he doesn't wear anymore and I think it's perfect to cover up while I'm painting in this room is actually a Hoosier cabinet from their old farm so this room is going to give me a real sentimental feeling it's kind of like an old kitchen before you enter my new fake old kitchen back behind me I don't know we've got some old wainscoting from an old Wisconsin farmhouse that we've installed I'm going to show you how we did that today and this is really my challenge because I've got a oil, I got an oil rubbed bronze faucet above me here. And what we had to do was use PVC. And so I'm gonna bust out every faux finish move I can and try to make this look like it matches at least just a little bit, just so it doesn't look like modern, you know, stainless and PVC piping going on. So I've got my handy glue gloves. Let's cue this theme song and get started. Enchanté. Part of the charm in old homes, especially in Europe and on the East Coast where we have the colonial homes is that everything's showing. The wires are showing, the pipes are showing, the ductwork is showing because none of that was there when the home was built. So I am going to try to recreate that look here in our boot room. I've got some PVC pipe and an old trusty friend, Rub and Buff. And I am going to cover the PVC and Rub and Buff and make it match or sort of match the oil rubbed bronze faucet that we're going to put in that sink that we found in the woods. We had a contractor working on the upstairs bathroom. This is actually the plumbing for the toilet in the new bathroom we're working on upstairs. He wanted to build a soffit here. Nothing screams outdated 1980s home like a soffit. I said, no, 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 leave it. Leave it showing. I'm going to work some magic. Now the bummer is there's some seams that are obviously going to look a little bit modern, but I think this is going to give it a really great effect. Now I just bought one of these because I didn't know if the color was going to be exactly what I'm looking for, but so far I'm really pleased. It, it does stretch really far. I don't know if I'll be able to do all of this with this one little tube. Rub and Buff is a great tool. You can use it on brass fixtures if you kind of want to dingy them up a little bit. You can use it on the beveled edge of a dresser. If you're painting a dresser, it has gold leaf, silver. In fact, there's all different shades of gold. It's really a fabulous product to have. You definitely want to use gloves because it's oil-based and it does not come off. But you can see it's just sticking perfectly to this plastic. I'll probably do a couple coats Maybe go over it with a sponge to sort of eliminate any streaks that I'm leaving.
what are you doing? Dude, what are we doing? Can you set yours on that side? Oh, oh. oh here comes the water. Turn it off. It's okay. Aiden did it with his foot. Turn the water on. Oh my gosh, me with the handy Rubbermaid garbage can. Okay, so see that wood in the back with the two PEX line coming down? That was the problem. There was no way I could pull that PEX line tight enough. It just kept kinking. And of course, the sink weighs, good lord, I don't know, 200 pounds, 300 pounds. So we simply just notched that wood out. Finally, I got a clue. I said, let's notch it out. Then the PEX can just lay right in it instead of me having to pull it down. Now over in the corner, the wooden lockers that I really have designed in my mind are way too cost prohibitive right now with the price of wood. So we're just gonna go the old two by four and hook routine. Because those hooks you see over on the right, that's all we have for a family of eight. With church coats and farm coats and all the paraphernalia that comes with having a big family. So we're just gonna do a two by four. I ran to Hobby Lobby last time I was down south and grabbed some iron hooks going to give everyone a little bit of breathing room, a little space to hang their clothing and their coats and their hats. Right now everybody's just right on top of each other. So I think it will provide just a little bit of sanity. It's not really the look I want in the long run, but you know me, I'm going to make it work. project is really not anywhere near done. We still have to paint, patch. I can't help myself, of course. That's a shocker. I had to get some color up here. Here's what I'm gonna use. This is my old standby product, uh, Rub and Buff. This comes in gold leaf, silver, a patina color. Because I'm doing an oil rubbed bronze faux finish today, I am using a color called Spanish Copper. It's about as close as I can get to match this faucet. Again, this faucet is a Kingston. Really, it's the same company as I showed you in the bathroom a few weeks ago. And then I've got some Dixie Belle um, paint products here, bronze and a patina spray. And this that I just picked up, I don't know if I'll end up using this or not. This is Deco Arts Media in an antique and cream in patina. Handy gloves, some miscellaneous tools. So let's drop down here under this sink and see if we can't finish up this piping project. Just like in that uh, PVC pipe that was on the ceiling, I'm gonna start with the rub and buff. This does take a few coats. I know this isn't gonna be perfect, but nobody's gonna be like crawling under the sink and looking at it. The whole point is to simply not have PVC. Yes, I could skirt this sink, do I want to? Do I want to cover up all this sanding that I did and installation that Joel did? No, I want to see it. I want it to be light and open and airy. Remember, this is the room where now I'm going to clean off all my dirty vegetables. I can wash all my poopy chicken eggs in this sink. No more bringing all of that stuff into our living space. So rub and buff works on plastic. It works on metal. You can use it on so many things. Rub and buff, if you are a DIYer and you've never used it, is your new best friend. All right, this is a little bit of coat one. Now, I've already heard from people who have seen similar sinks out in the back 40, out in a field, and they wanna know, can we do the same thing? Yes, you can. My suggestion would be to use a toboggan, just like we did, because it's they're really heavy. We waited till the snow was there to bring ours up. And then uh, the bottom of the sink, like where the plumbing would start, was all rusty and nasty, and finding a welder where we live is impossible. So we used a boot, 
with some Genweld goop to hold it all together and a clamp to get things going. That was the easiest solution so far. It's fabulous. We've been using the sink. It is leak free. So now we're just trying to make it look good and it's gonna take a few coats of rub and buff. And when you're all done, rub and buff, just like the name implies, the more you polish it, the shinier it gets. So you wanna let that sort of cure for a little while. If you're planning on making it shiny, take a rag and just buff it out. I'm not too worried about that because I'm gonna sort of goop mine up. Oh, there's hair caught in my lipstick. I'm gonna goop mine up with a verdigris. I've got a coat of the uh, rub and buff on and I'm going to buff that out later when it's cured a little bit. Maybe I'll put a space heater in here. And now I'm just going over everything with this uh, Dixie Belle bronze color. And there are some, you know, there's lots of companies that do this. If you shop at Michael's Arts and Crafts, if you have one of those in your town, there's a company I think called Modern Masters that makes something similar, but there's a lot of companies that make uh, a metallic paint and then a chemical that you spray or put over the top to give that patina look. So what I'm doing is just what I did on the big pipe um, up there is I'm just kind of hitting the joints like where if this was a real old pipe where we might have had some some leakage and you don't really want it to dry and then I'm going to um, hit the wet paint with some of this patina. So I'm just kind of dabbing it in these joint seams. It doesn't have to be perfect, because remember, nobody's gonna be all up in this business because it's under the sink here. But it's just a great way to cover chrome and stainless steel or anything. So don't, don't think about it too much. Don't, don't obsess too much. Just get in there, get a coat on it. You'll find spots that you missed when you're done. Of course, the sprayer on my little guy broke. So I'm just gonna be dabbing this on and it's gonna drip, which is great because it's gonna have that look that it's maybe been dripping over the years. And give it a good hour, hour and a half to dry for the full effect to come forth. You're gonna feel a little doubtful at first, like, like it's simply not going to happen, but it is. since we found this sink out in the woods and lugged it up to the garage. It's been sitting there since then. 
I think it was worth the wait. We are going to refinish the entire sink, though I do have one child that thinks we should leave it as it is. Stick around because over the next few weeks, we'll show you what we end up doing. We'll show you the painting of this wall and the rest of everything that's going on in this room. If you'd like daily updates, of course, make sure that you're following over on Instagram. That's where you and I can hang out every day. And of course, that you are a member of the Old World Design Society. You can do that by clicking this white circle right here. You'll get the latest magazine. And right now I will give you full access to all the design classes that I taught last year. Spend some more time on the channel, watch a video, be sure you thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you again very soon. A bientôt. Hello lovelies, I'm Angela and this is Parisian Farm Girl, bienvenue and welcome to my channel. It's been a few weeks since my last video and that's because it is the full court press here in our everyday chateau. We are trying to get as many projects done. We're trying to tick off as many things. Remember last week's video or a few weeks ago when I showed you the ugly parts of our house? Uh, we're trying to get as many things done on that list as we can before gardening season begins. And that makes it a little, little bit difficult to film and do the projects at the same time. So I've been bringing my iPhone with me around the house while we're doing some of these projects. And that's what I want to share with you today. We are making definite progress on the bathrooms. We have three bathrooms under construction today. So I'm going to share a little bit of that process and how things are going. And I hope that you will find yourself inspired. Now stay till the end because I'm going to be sharing with you something really special that I will be doing next week and I would like to invite you to come along. Okay, let's do this. I've got this vision for taking this green dresser and turning it into our new bathroom vanity. I have been stocking up on hardware, very old world, Victorian inspired. Kingston is the brand of faucet that you see all over my house. A lot of people ask me, I definitely recommend their faucets because they do a really good job with reproductions. I have my work cut out for me. This room is a disaster. The house was built in 1984 and it was never finished. So that horrible bathroom vanity, it never even had drawers. So I popped up some curtains when we moved in and we've been living with this ugly seashell marble thing. It's really too bad because we end up tearing it out and Aiden did that for me and he tossed it out the window and I didn't film it, which is too bad because it was hysterical about as hysterical as the black goo that was coming out of the pipes when we undid them before he tore this vanity out for me. Meanwhile, down the hall, Joel is taping and patching all the drywall in what will soon be the master bath. There is something going on in just about every room. As soon as Aiden got that vanity cleared out, I started in on screwing down the hardy board so I could try my hand at tiling. Now, I do a lot of stonework around the property, inside and outside. I've never tiled before. Uh, definitely challenging. I'm learning as I go. It's not gonna be perfect, but I think that will help it maintain sort of an old world vibe. I try to embrace imperfections wherever I can. 
What I couldn't afford to be imperfect was centering this sink right in the middle of the vanity. Now I found this vanity at a local thrift shop. It's very well made. It's got a great Chicago, Illinois stamp on the back, but the sink didn't come with a template. So I spent a lot of time trying to get it just right on some parchment paper, and then Joel went at it with a rather dull saw blade. Finally, I think we got it after about a hundred drop-ins and tries. Now it was time to put the faucet together. This is where Junior loves to be involved. He is obsessed with pipes and water flow and he's so bloody gorgeous and adorable. I love to see him try to work. is making its way all the way around the room and while Joel was doing that plumbing I was downstairs tiling this floor so you can see we're spinning a lot of plates I still need to grout that I still need to grout this floor and finish the other half of it and then we're gonna bring up the tub and put some new wallpaper up but darn it we have a beautiful sink I could not be happier that was a little bit different for me just sharing with you clips of what's been going on I really do love to present a beginning a middle and an end but that is simply not possible because these projects take a long time as we're bringing in help and getting supplies but I think you can see what I'm trying to do I'm trying to create an old world look in a new world home so next week i'm going to be teaching a free webinar and i am inviting you to join me so be sure to check the link in this video description get signed up for this class i am going to share with you five ways to bring old world charm into your new world home i get asked that question all the time what about new construction what do i do girlfriend i feel you it is a struggle the struggle is real i also would like to invite you to make sure you are a member of the old world design society get your magazine join us for the classes in the private forum you can do that by clicking this white circle right here i will be back soon we are plugging away on projects i will have more after results to show you very soon i appreciate you being here Adviento. Thank you so much for being here for this trip down memory lane. I hope it inspires you to grab those sinks when you're out and about at tag sales, barn sales, antique shops, or even in your backyard. I'd love for you to stick around on the channel. Check out this video right here. If you're loving this old world interior design vibe and you'd like to hang out with like-minded people in a private forum, classes that I hold and receive a print or digital publication, then I invite you to become a member of my Old World Design Society. And you can do that by clicking this white circle right here. And I will see you again very soon. A bientôt.